Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the National Firearms Centre, part of the British Royal Armoury's uh, collection in Leeds, and we are taking a look at an extremely cool, very early HK prototype rifle. This is the prototype of, or a prototype, of the elusive HK-32. Now, HK has a nomenclature system that they stick to about half the time, or at least that they did, and it worked with two different digits. The first digit in one of HK's numbers is the type of firearm, and the second digit is the caliber. So, for example, when you have the HK-21 and 23 uh, machine guns, that first digit 2 indicates a belt-fed machine gun, the second digit indicates the different caliber. 1 would be 7.62 NATO, uh, for example HK-91, where 9 indicates a semi-auto civilian rifle, 1 indicates 7.62 NATO. Uh, the HK-23, 2 is belt-fed machine gun, 3 is 5.56 NATO. Well, this is a 32, and just as, if, as in uh, the HK-33, the first 3 indicates a select-fire shoulder rifle, the second 3 there indicates 5.56 NATO. This, as a 32, is uh, select-fire shoulder rifle in 762 by 39 You'll note, of course, the curved magazine, which is designed specifically to match the, the taper of the 762 by 39 cartridge. These rifles didn't use AK magazines, although there was a developmental batch made that did use AK magazines specifically for uh, competing for a Finnish rifle contract, which it didn't get. But um, what uh, there's been a lot of, of debate about the HK-32, because it shows up in HK catalogs, but doesn't appear to have ever been manufactured. Well. Maybe, maybe not. It definitely was manufactured, at least in small numbers. I'm aware of a contract that was made to someone in Africa, possibly Tanzania, but I'm not 100% sure on that. There are also some photos recently that came out of Mexican policemen with HK-32 rifles, although it's not clear if those were made domestically in Mexico or if they are an HK contract. At any rate, this is not one of those contract guns. This is an extremely early gun. Uh, we know from the date on the side of the receiver that this was manufactured in September of 1957, which is extremely early in HK's history. Uh, it was 1957 when the German army was actually testing the Setme rifle. Um, the Spanish army didn't actually adopt the Setme C until 1958. Uh, so in fact we know one more thing from here, and that's the serial number on this is 1727. And at this point in HK's history, they were sequentially numbering every single rifle they made in the same series. So, for example, 1706, just you know, less than two dozen rifles before this, is uh, a 7.62 NATO STG Setme rifle. So this was a period when they were making small numbers of rifles, almost certainly by hand, for a whole wide variety of different trials and experiments. And what we have here is a rifle that's actually kind of as much Setme as it is what we would recognize today as G3. So it has a Setme style muzzle brake, has this Setme metal forend and bipod, it has a very Setme like rear sight, which is a two position uh, rear notch instead of what we would later come to recognize on the back of the receiver in the HK diopter aperture sights. Um, the fire control group, which we'll take a look at in a moment, is also very much Setme style. So what we have here is almost certainly the very first iteration of a 762 by 39 HK rifle. So I know some of you guys are fanatical HK devotees, and you're going to want to see inside this. So let's pull it apart. Alrighty, so let's start by taking a look at the receiver markings. We can definitively rule out this being a Spanish production gun because of that nice big HK right on there. Serial number is 1727, and production date is September. 10, month 10, of 1957. Again, extremely early. Uh, in fact, I would point out, um, it was by in 1956 they had not yet started putting in paddle magazine releases. So this would have been one of the very first guns to actually have a paddle magazine release. I will also point out that the button magazine release is fixed and does nothing on this gun, because, well, it doesn't interact with the magazine the same way as on a standard 7.62 magazine, because we have... wedge this out of there... what we have here is actually a standard 7.62 uh, NATO size receiver that has a filler block in the back to accommodate the 7.62 by 39 shorter magazine. 
Anyway, the other side of the receiver has nothing. The selector markings are in German, S-E-D, um, that's safe, sicher, uh, Einzelfeuer and Dauerfeuer, so single shot and uh, repeat or multiple shot. So when people talk about the HK-32, one thing that's always brought up is what the magazine would be. Uh, there was, like I said, a small batch made for Finnish trials that used AK magazines, but in general uh, the HK-32s used their own proprietary magazine, simply something that would fit better into HK's magazine locking system. So uh, you can see we have a little locking notch back here, uh, the, the magazine insertion stops there, and what is very much an AK style magazine design. It is curved, of course, to accommodate the cartridge taper. Interestingly, this actually has the serial number uh, marked on the magazine, which is, I guess, not that uncommon of very early prototype sorts of rifles. And this is a matching magazine, which is cool. Uh, if you look at... well, there are a couple pictures that have been published that originally came out in an HK self-published book about the company's history, and there are a couple pictures in there of later uh, prototype HK-32 rifles, or like sample model HK-32 rifles, and those use a very different pattern of magazine. So this is clearly one based on the Setme style of magazine construction that wasn't used later on. Now one of the things that makes this rifle very interesting to me is how many of the early Setme features it has on it. The rear sight is a perfect example of that. Instead of having the HK diopter, we have a sight in the middle of the receiver that is two positions. We have a 250 and we have a 150, which just by itself is kind of an unusual choice in two different ranges. But you can flip back and forth between those. The front sight is a very sharp point, which is also kind of unusual and interesting. The front sight block and the muzzle brake are very distinctively set me. Um, HK would use a, uh, a slotted flash hider that's pretty familiar to us today, but the early set me rifles used this pattern, and that's what HK was, was using uh, in these very early designs. Same thing goes for the metal handguard here with the, uh, the fixed bipod legs. That's uh, very, very uh, reminiscent of the early set me rifles and also the carry handle. Uh, it does fold up like that, but this again is very much a set me feature. Lastly, on the buttstock we have storage holes for the takedown pins, but where on the G3 they put them back here, uh, when they were building... When, when this was still the set me, they were located closer together and right up here behind the sling slot. Now here's a neat little feature that I have not seen on any HK or set me rifle before, and it's really neat. Inside the grip we have this, slotting right in there. So there's a little spring-loaded button uh, to keep it from just falling out. This obviously is a rifle grenade sight. Did you notice before that there's a slot in the front sight protective uh, circle? Well, if you didn't, now you know why, because this drops right in there to give you your grenade launcher sight. That is super cool. And then when you're done, just slip it right back up into the grip. This disassembles just like every other HK, so I'm not going to bother walking you through that. But I want to point out a few comparisons here. This is the buttstock from a standard uh, Spanish production Setme rifle, early Setme rifle. And there are a couple things you can see here. First off, the location of these pin storage holes is just like this guy. Also, um, note that the recoil spring is just loose, as it is on our 7.62x39 gun. Recoil spring is actually the exact same length. don't know if I can get this far enough back to show you that. Yeah, there you go. The camera distorts this a little bit, but uh, these recoil springs are in fact the same length. Also, note how the rear end cap here comes straight back, and then there's a quite steep drop to the stock. If we compare that to an HK G3 stock, and this is a pretty early one, this is 1966, uh, note that the end cap on this guy drops down at the back here, unlike the straight uh, set me pattern, or set me style, and then the stock itself has a little bit less of an abrupt drop to it. Some of that is actually taken up in the metal end cap. And, of course, you can see that the storage pinholes have moved. Uh, we also no longer have a slot clear through the buttstock. We have 
uh, what would become a standard, what is the standard HK style there. So uh, a bit of a comparison you can see between SETME pattern and G3 pattern. And of course by this time uh, the Germans had standardized on a captive recoil spring. Now to look at pistol grips and fire control assemblies, we will again compare between our SETME B. Remember this gun actually predates the Spanish adoption of the SETME C. So uh, a basically from the same time period uh, SETME would be the SETME B. This is our 7.62x39 gun, and this is a 1966 HK G3. So right off the bat uh, you can see that the style of attachment here changed. This is a little more secure, a little stronger in the G3. Comparing the SETME to the 7.62x39 HK, you can see that the fire controls, the, the fire control groups are basically the same internally. You've got the same style of, uh, of parts in there. However, the SETME B actually has T for, I believe, tier or tiro, uh, semi auto, and then safe here, and then rapido, uh, full auto on the bottom. That 7.62x39 from HK has changed those selector. The, the relative location to be the standard for HK, which is safe, semi, and then full. So they changed up the, you know, the, the orientation of the selector, but the parts inside are basically made the same way. If we swap out and compare the 7.62x39 gun to a standard G3, now you can see some substantial differences. Look at the construction of the hammer. Note that the G3 has a, uh, a linear hammer spring back here where the 7.62x39 gun has a SETME style coiled up um, you know, torsional uh, firing pin spring, hammer spring, sorry, back there. Um, the selector positions are the same, however. So this just uh, goes to show the, the developmental iterations. They still had some, uh, some development to do from the SETME style fire control to what would eventually be the standard G3. If we look at receivers, 7.62x39 here, set me B up here, you can see that this 7.62 gun is made on the exact same size of receiver as the standard NATO caliber set mace. There is just a magazine block that has been added to fit the shorter magazine in. Note that the set me B has this exact same style of folding carry handle as the 7.62 gun, however it actually had a rear tangent sight at this point instead of HK's change to the two position uh, flip sight. The handguards of the two are basically identical, as are the bipods. A little bit of a difference here with an extra cutout where there isn't one on the set me, but not a big difference. And then the muzzle brakes are also virtually identical. A little bit of a difference again. This, this rifle, the set me B, is set up to attach a bayonet up here where the 7.62x39 gun is not. It just has a simple plug. If I can wedge it out of there. Just has a simple plug there in the front of the uh, the charging handle extension tube where you could store a cleaning kit. I certainly wouldn't finish off this video without also taking a look at the bolt assembly. It's basically identical, this sort of thing didn't change much. So we'll go ahead and take it apart, because that's what a lot of you guys are going to want to see. So bolt head, pretty typical, set that aside. And now the really technical bit, of course these are roller delayed guns, which means the angle of the locking, well not locking, the angle of the wedge surface here is quite critical to the proper functioning of the guns and requires quite a lot of calculation. This is our standard G3, and this guy is our 7.62x39 gun, which you can see has been made substantially differently. And in fact if we look on this side, it actually has 70 degrees electro penciled on it. Um, I have not measured it, I cannot strictly, uh, uh, I, I can't guarantee that that is correct, but I don't see any other reason for them to have put that on there unless it is in fact a 70 degree wedge angle. So that is really cool. A sneak look inside, and you can see from the, uh, the wear there that this gun has definitely been fired. A cool sneak look inside HK's engineering process for the HK32. It's really cool to get a chance to see what is really the beginning of the story of the HK-32. It's a very poorly documented story, we don't know very much at all about it. Um, but here we have the beginning, I am very hopeful that at some point I will manage to find one of those African contract rifles 
to see an example of what HK actually mass produced, well, very limited scale mass production, but certainly series production of a 762 by 39 caliber rifle. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'd like to thank all of my patrons. Uh, it's your direct support at a buck a month or more if you like some of the Patreon perks, but it's your support that makes it possible for me to come to places like the UK and bring you guys awesome prototype guns like this. And of course I need to give a big thanks to the Royal Armouries for giving me the chance to pull this down out of their collection tear it apart and show it to you guys. They have probably the best firearms collection in Western Europe. It is not open to the general public, but it is available by appointment to researchers. So if you're working on a firearms research project, be it book or other media, and you're interested in taking a look at something in their collection, give them a ring. Their uh, website is in the description text below, and uh, there's some great people. They'll help set up a meeting for you, and uh, you can get to take a look at all the cool stuff that's back here. Thanks for watching.